Hey, this is Guy from New Plastic, and in this third part of the light series, we'll explore how to get different effect using chiaroscuro lighting or a low key light setup. I'll be using a lot of techniques and terms we went over in the last two videos, so feel free to check them out before watching this video if you haven't. Also, feel free to check out my Patreon or YouTube membership where you can uh, help me make better and more content, and also get some project files, uh, my own personal project files, free products, and uh, all sorts of stuff. Follow me on Instagram at ojang, subscribe, comment, share, clean your mouse and keyboard, it's literally the dirtiest part of your house. Let's go. So, chiaroscuro is a lighting technique that uses extreme contrast between light and shadow. The name comes from the Italian chiaro, meaning light, and scuro, meaning dark. And that's what it's all about juxtaposing the light parts of the image with the dark parts to create tension and depth. This technique was developed first by Renaissance painters like Da Vinci, Rembrandt, Vermeer, and maybe most famously Caravaggio. And ever since, this technique was a perfect way to achieve strong emotions and express depth in a 2D image through photography, film, and of course, CG. I think chiaroscuro is such a specific term though and I would put it under the bigger umbrella of low-key lighting. I thought it would be a great way to start this uh, part of the light series as it really boils down lighting to very few light sources and extreme use of shadows and as we learned in the last video, knowing how to use your shadows is, in my opinion, the fundamental key to controlling your lights. So let's start with this scene I got here. I have this model of a woman with a simple backplane with some vintage wall panels. I thought that for this scene, this woman is in an old house with no electricity being lit up by a candle or a window or something like that. I have a simple HDRI just so we can see something. And this HDRI obviously doesn't fit the vibe we're looking for. Before we do anything, let's set up an octane camera and find our framing so we know how to set up the lights. I'll increase the focal length to something like 80, which is more flattering to a human face. And let's go for something like a medium shot, capturing the top of her torso, but focusing on her face. This looks okay for now. Let's open the octane settings and I have the specular depth in GI clamp kind of high because I added a few layers of transparency to the eyes, but it doesn't have to be this high. Let's go to the settings, then environment, and make sure it's set to black. And my exposure is set slightly higher. We can bring it down to one for now. All right, let's turn off the HDRI and start from complete darkness. Let's add an area light and place it here. So it lights the side of the face that faces away from the camera. Let me quickly add a null and use it as a light target and turn down the light power a little bit. Okay, so this way of lighting, where the light source lights up the side that's facing away from the camera, is called short lighting. When the light source lights the side of the face that's facing the camera, that's called broad lighting. By the way, there's this red artifact here that probably has to do with the hair intersecting with the material. I'm not sure it's not supposed to be there. But anyway, yeah, this is broad lighting. I tend to like short lighting better because there's just something more exciting when the shadows are facing the camera. I think it adds more depth and drama and it just feels more cinematic. And you can see how already we have something kind of decent. Let's reduce the temperature to get a warmer light tone. Let's also change the light shape to disc and also let's change this into an IES light. And I want a distribution that's a bit more focused. Let's go for this umbrella. And I accidentally added a PNG preview file, so let's go back and add the IES file. Okay, not a huge difference. Let's scale the light down and place it slightly higher. I love that glint on the left eye here. This is called a catch light and I might just do a whole video about this because it's so important in CG. Okay, let's keep moving the light more to her side. And as we move it, we increase the shadow on her face. When I do this, I look at the lit up areas within the shadows. So this area here under the left eye, it's now this island of light in a sea of shadow and I love that. Let's try to move it even more kind of behind her. I just want to see how far we can move it before we lose everything. And that's cool, really dramatic. Every small movement creates a slightly different feel. What if we scale down the light even more? I think we're losing that glint in our left eye, so let's scale it back up. And now we have it again, okay. Let's try to move it even more towards our backside, so it's becoming more of a rim light. And that's really cool. I mean, this is super dramatic, right? She's almost completely in the dark and just barely getting a hint of the contour of her face. Okay, let's name this key light and let's add another light to light up the background. So I'll bring it much closer to the back plane and let's make it invisible. 
and bring it way, way down. I want this background to be brighter than her left side, the shaded side, but darker than her right side, her lit up side. To be even more specific and more of a classic chiaroscuro, I want to make the left side of the background dark, then her right side light, then her left side dark, and then the right side of the background light again. That'll get us this beautiful contrast across the whole image. Let's rotate this light to kind of block it from lighting the other side of the wall and just play with its position until I'm happy with the spread of the light on the wall. I'll also move the wall around to get one of those panels to stand right behind her hair just so we get a clear outline of her silhouette. Let's make it a bit warmer, maybe weaker. That seems fine. Let's duplicate the key light so we have this light placement saved and try another way to light her. So by moving this light slightly more to the front, we expose much more of her and I think this actually looks better. We get more contrast with the background too. Okay, call it key light 2 and duplicate it and keep looking for more ways. And I'm trying to light more of her face and maybe more from the bottom and slightly warmer, kind of like a candle on a table. But I don't really like how it's looking. Let's try from above and actually really like this. This kind of acts like a ceiling lamp and I love the shapes that it creates on her face. Let's try a much more focused IES distribution. Mm, nah, even more. Let's go for this beam of light. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Dude, I love it. It really flatters her face, but it's also super moody. Cool, let's turn this one off and add an actual spotlight. Let's place it around the same location and put the target on it. Let's make the cone a bit smaller, bring the power down, and I'm just playing with the scattering settings. I'm brightening up the absorption to have more light absorbed or disappear, and reducing the density to reduce the amount of light scattering. And let's hide the background light for now. Mm, now I feel like I want more scattering around her. Let's darken the absorption, up the light power, Increase the cone size. That's starting to get there. Let's bring in the barn doors a bit. Bring the light slightly down and increase the cone even more. And yeah, that's cool. We get all this dark gray contrasting with our even darker silhouette. Let's scale up the cone even more. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Okay, making the scattering slightly darker. And if I increase the density, nope. Let's actually bring down the density. So now the actual light is stronger, as you can see, and reduce the absorption. So now actually, let's increase the scattering so we can get much more of that volumetric lighting. Yep, yep. I think now I just need to bring down the power a little. Yeah, I love her silhouette here. Let's see how it looks with the background light. Yeah, I fucking love it. Okay, let's hide this one and duplicate the very first light we made. And let's make it real big. Make it invisible. Now we get a much softer light, which also looks really cool. Play with it a little, maybe bring down the exposure a bit because it seems a bit burnt. Okay, let's go for a backlight and really get that silhouette look. So dramatic. Let's make it double-sided so it simultaneously lights the back wall too. And it doesn't seem to light it. What if we bring it closer? Still no. Maybe because the IES light is on. And yep, now it lights both sides. So I'll just play with the power and position to get the right contrast. With this one, I might as well make the back wall much more lit so the black silhouette really pops out. I'm always thinking about contrast. Yeah, it looks better. Yeah, it looks best when her right side is more lit up. You get that eye barely glinting through all that shadow. Okay, let's keep experimenting. I'll duplicate this light, make it rectangle, and in the light tag, I'll add an octane checker texture to the distribution. Let's add a projection node, set it to XYZ to UVW, scale down the X, and actually let's make the light visible so we can see how the texture is looking. So actually, let's scale the Y down and scale the rest up so we get these horizontal stripes. Okay, we can't see the texture at all and that's because we need to scale down the light way, way, way down. And only at the smallest scale you can start to see the texture getting sharper and sharper. 
Let's bring down the power. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And yeah, we can just play with the scale, the power, the position to get the look we want. I can also go to the projection map and play with the settings of the texture itself. I want to move it just so our eyes are kind of peeking through the blinds. Yeah, that's not bad. Maybe if we reduce the saturation of the overall image all the way down. And yeah, eh, it's not the worst I've seen. I'm not crazy about the stripes on the back wall. So what we can do is duplicate the plane. Make it fully black. Then add an octane tag to it and hide it from the camera. Now it blocks the light from hitting the back wall and we can still see the back wall. I mean, we can't see it now because no light is hitting it, but I also want to give it a more contemporary kind of plaster wall texture to fit the new look. I'll add a universal material and let's actually turn on the background light so we can see what we're doing. Make it a disc shape and scale it down. We get these artifacts because the ray epsilon is all the way down, but we can just bring that wall closer to fix that. Okay, I'm fast forwarding through all this because uh, this is not about making a procedural plaster material. We'll be making these in their own dedicated tutorials very soon. And there you go. Maybe bring the light more to the right. Can probably make the wall slightly darker. And I can also go to the plane that blocks it from getting the stripe light and make it only like halfway invisible. So we still get a little bit of that light on it. But nah, I still don't like it. All right, let's duplicate the camera and use this one to zoom in. Man, this crop is so much better. This is sick. So I had two more setups I tested on camera, but after watching them, I felt like they're just dragging the video a bit too much. And they're also stepping into the world of expressive lighting, which is a subject I want to dedicate a whole video for. So I'll just super fast forward through all these and we'll get into expressive style in the next video. I'll have the non-extremely sped up version available for my patrons though because I might as well. If you really want to see it you can subscribe to my Patreon but it's pretty much everything we've been covering in this video in a slightly different context mixed with stuff we'll go over in the next video. So yeah dude that's some approaches to low-key lighting for you. In the next videos we'll go through other light approaches like high-key lighting, expressive lighting, naturalistic lighting, and some specific kind of glass or metal lighting for stuff like products photography. A warm hug to all my glorious patrons and members. Inning Gong, Guillaume Lopez, The Great Wonder Studios, Dave Toro, Celia Lopez, Nob, Marie Robbins, Foyas Chari, Ariaman Munish, Teza Jing, Kim Doyon, Wai Kai Zheng, Eric Hu, Elisa, Vader, Daniel Larry, Anthony Gargas, Thomas, Beta Mai, Minky Kim, Zoen, Unika, Howard Murick, Average CPU, Estatius Panay, Hader, Aaron Mars Stephenson, Leo, Miskick 2S, Medium, Elad, 3D Monkey Biz, Chris Schultz, Arlen, Kiki Lim, Suki Valetsu, The 22 Design, Joel Rieger, Adrian Desolate, Studio Image, Matus Jadrzejewski, Vasco Gross, Blue Hamel, Mark Cragen, Arkady Ulitsky, Fasto Furioso, Joshua Akoy, Jahui Ding, Zeming Wong, Punxsacornum Siri, Ali M, Webb, Kong Idiot, Derek Schultz, Nicolas Federico Vasquez, Maddie de Gueldre, Yon Chung, Sigur Dur Yimer, William James Theron, NZ, Lai Tan, Christian Wilderman, Confused Bread, Laos, and everybody else on the list. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.